Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day, there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And holy schmoly, am I looking forward to today's discussion. Not quite sure where all it's gonna lead us because my guest has such a fun and diverse background. And you know, we talk about using our left brain or our right brain. He uses all of his brain and somewhere in between. Um, you know, and so please join me in welcoming Steve Mayer to our program today. Welcome, Steve. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Deb. It's wonderful to be with you. Thank you. Great, great. Well, let me tell people a little bit about you and then we will jump in. So Steve Mayer owns his own business where he coaches strategy sessions and interviews for major projects primarily in the engineering sector. He served as the general manager of an international toll bridge, a faculty fellow in Niagara's University College of Business is another one of his projects or his businesses. He is an author of poetry, has held several executive management positions in engineering firms and not-for-profits. He holds a BS in civil engineering, an MBA and a PhD. So again, Steve, welcome. Thank you, Deb. Great to be with you. Great. Well, you know, I always like to know a little bit about how my guests got to where they are today. And obviously, you have taken a very diverse route. So tell us a little bit more about how you got to where you are today. Oh, for certain. And I think even though it's a pretty diverse background, I think there's some common threads that run run through my background. First of all, I graduated, of all things, from the Environmental College, uh, Environmental Science and Forestry College mm -hmm. at Syracuse, part of the State University. I know somebody who has a forestry <laughs> degree from Syracuse. <laughs> okay. My background there was, in all things, photogrammetry, aerial, uh, mm -hmm. aerial surveying. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I went to work for local engineering firms here in Western New York. Mm -hmm started out as a surveyor, then an engineer, then a project engineer, then a project manager, mm -hmm. and uh, rose to be the director of marketing for a local, a local firm. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've always loved about engineering, even though I'm not a strong technical person, I have deep understanding of mm -hmm. all the technical issues. I love the business side of engineering because mm -hmm. first of all, every single thing in life is engineered. Mm -hmm. Engineering touches every aspect of life, the car you drive, the clothes you wear, the plane you're mm -hmm. in, the house you're in. Mm -hmm. So I saw untold opportunities mm -hmm. and I liked the business and marketing side of it. Mm -hmm. So while I was, uh, once I went through several local firms, I went to a firm in Virginia. I was their director of marketing. I returned back to uh, to Western New York mm -hmm. where, I'm, where I'm from and was with a local firm for a couple of years. And then there was an ad in the local newspaper back then, it's in the early 90s, and saying, hey, there's this place called the Buffalo and Fort Erie Public Bridge Authority. And mm -hmm. even though I've lived here my whole life, I never, I always called it the Peace Bridge Authority. Anyway, right. mm -hmm. it's a major international toll bridge. Mm -hmm. Goes into Canada, Canada for everybody right. who just went international. <laughs> right, from Buffalo, New York to Fort Erie, Ontario. It's right at the headworks of the Niagara River. It is empties out of Lake Erie on its way to the Niagara Falls and mm -hmm. Lake Ontario. I, and I uh, applied for the job and there was about a hundred applicants and I got the job mm. and I had a, it was a wonderful opportunity mm -hmm. because I had been on the engineering side. Now I was on the client side. I was actually mm -hmm. running a major piece of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It's one of the largest bridges in the world in terms of merchandise trade and a peak day at that time, maybe two, $250 million a day in merchandise trade was crossing mm -hmm. the bridge. So the metaphor of a bridge was beautiful too, because mm -hmm. I had joined two countries. Mm -hmm. I worked with Canadian and American staff. I was the general manager and the American officer. So it was a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Mm -hmm. I then, I left there after a 10 and a half year gig and I had been working on my PhD. Mm -hmm. Up to that point, I had completed part-time a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, mm -hmm. a Master's in Business. I became a professional engineer in several states. Mm -hmm. And then I, 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 when I left the bridge, I had two years to work on my PhD and I mm -hmm. finished it part-time. Uh, and it was in a program that 
My PhD is what's called economic geography, world business and international trade, which mm-hmm. was ideal from my Peace Bridge right. days mm-hmm. and just working in engineering and, and business strategy and all those good things. And I ended up getting my PhD when I was 53 years old. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, I don't know if I recommend, uh, I don't know if I recommend a uh, part-time PhD. It was, uh, it was a pretty It'd it be difficult. Mm-hmm. Difficult. It was an interesting. I'm glad I did it. I have mm-hmm. no regrets. But along the way, I happened to get a request from Nag University to come up and interview for a position. Mm-hmm. So I never thought I'd be an academic. Long story short, I became a faculty fellow mm-hmm. at Niagara University, where I worked for many years, probably full time for about ten years, and then mm-hmm. now I just do adjunct work because I mm-hmm. retired as a full time faculty fellow. Mm-hmm. But I worked largely in the engine, uh, the MBA program, mm-hmm. and I taught three different co- uh, three different classes: the capstone business strategy class, the uh, an entrepreneurship, but the, uh, class that was for undergrads. Mm-hmm. I also taught a international management class and a technology transfer class. Ah, uh, very largely, diverse types of, of things. Yeah, very di- very diverse. Mm-hmm. Then what I did, um, I was also at that time working for a very large engineering firm mm-hmm. where I was in charge of their uh, internal, a lot of their internal business uh, uh, development and marketing processes. I worked all over the United States, all over Canada, the Middle East, a little bit in South America. And this firm was a major, a major firm that mm-hmm. did huge projects all over the world. And I worked in the strategy group mm. and pulling together all of my academic background and my interest, uh, I began to really focus in on business strategy and how mm-hmm. firms win work. Okay. And in fact, my PhD, which is an applied PhD and mm-hmm. it's empirical work, I, I looked at en- competition in the U.S. engineering industry, and this would apply to other service industries mm-hmm. as well. But the age old question is, why do some firms in one industry do better than other firms in the exact same industry? Right. And they you seem ask, to have the same resources, all of those various right, things. Right. Access to the same people, mm-hmm. to the same you know, financial resources, whatever. And um, I, so I really wanted to do a deep dive into that. There was a lot mm-hmm. in the trade literature, but not in the academic literature. Mm-hmm. So I did a massive survey. I looked at the top 300 firms in the United States. And what I found very interesting was that it came really, I looked at 25 factors, but it came mm-hmm. down to three. Number one was the relationships that the engineering execs and people in the firm had with their clients, mm-hmm. which it should be no surprise. Mm-hmm. The second was the reputation of the firm, which has gained over many, many years and many projects mm-hmm. and can be destroyed very quickly. Right. Uh, reputations mm-hmm. take a long time to mm-hmm. build, but can be destroyed quickly. And the third item was the project manager. The client wants to know who am I working with? And generally mm-hmm. that's more important than the firm. Right. They want to know day in they and day. They build that a, relationship. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And those are enduring. They're an effective barrier to mm-hmm. entry. So I looked at, I did a real deep dive on that. And I looked at, and I looked at uh, all those factors because you could say, well, a lot of, you know, I'll ask students, I'll say, why do some firms do better than others? Oh, they got better leadership. Mm-hmm. They got better resources. Mm-hmm. They're located in a better place, whatever, all kinds of factors. Mm-hmm. And it seemed to boil down though, to those three. Uh, which was kind of interesting. So mm-hmm. what I decided to do was to create my own business because one of the things I had also been doing, I do a lot of presentation and interview coaching mm-hmm. where firms, uh, my client, for example, pursues mm-hmm. major projects. And these are big jobs that are mm-hmm. hundreds of millions of dollars in constructive value. And what we'll do is we'll, they'll start and begin working on projects maybe years before they even mm-hmm. hit the street, so to speak. And what I'll do is work with them facilitating strategy war rooms. I'll I'll work with them. I kind of walk a thin line here because on one hand, I want to be objective and come in Mm -hmm. and just hear what they have to say. And the other is to offer some advice. Mm -hmm. I also do a lot of presentation coaching where we Mm -hmm. literally set up the room like it's as a rehearsal, almost like Mm -hmm. a movie set. And we select all the different types of uh, creative services, AR, Mm -hmm. VR, you know, simple boards, PowerPoint, mm-hmm. whatever it might be. And I walk them through that and help mm-hmm. them win major projects. Mm-hmm. Along the way, I realized, uh, and as this has just been the last two years, and people that know me well say, what the heck happened to you? I, I um, Two years ago, 
before Thanksgiving, I was thinking about a Thanksgiving blessing. And rather than do the usual, um, the usual uh, blessing at dinner time, I mm-hmm. said, you know what, I think I'm going to write a poem. I'm going to write a poem about, I'm going to read that instead. Mm-hmm. So I wrote this poem and I said, I really like this because I have liked mm-hmm. poetry, even when I was younger, the English lit and mm-hmm. particularly mm-hmm. The, uh, the age of the romanticist, mm-hmm. Shelley, Byron, Keats, Wordsworth, all those, those individuals. So I wrote a poem and then I wrote another one and then I wrote another one and another one. And, and then I wrote you wrote about, a book. Uh, right. I wrote, tw- I wrote 25 and I said, this is, this is really fun. Mm-hmm. I also then h- reached out and I heard a, a watercolor artist in Argentina I had her do a watercolor for each one. Mm-hmm. I reached out to a woman in Spain that did the layout of the book for Amazon and KDP, Kindle Direct mm-hmm. Publishing. I had a local uh, editor, which mm-hmm. really helped me out. And I said, you know, I want to memorialize this. I want to I want to write a book. I want to go through mm-hmm. the process. So I wrote it. I hired the individuals mm-hmm. to work with me. I hired an IP lawyer to make sure I had the, all the copyrights. Mm-hmm. Right. Also, mm-hmm. I, which is important for mm-hmm. anybody making sure you mm-hmm. own the artwork if you're going to mm-hmm. you know, publish that in your book. I also wanted to be known, kind of pick a moniker you. So I'm called the observant poet mm-hmm. and I got a U.S. Mm-hmm. trademark on the observant poet. In nice. Fact, mm-hmm. If you go on a search engine and you type in the observant poet, mm-hmm. I pop up number one, um, even though I've only written one book. Mm-hmm. So I published the book. Mm-hmm. And I actually have gone to poetry readings. I went to a book signing. Mm-hmm. Now, is poetry a major commercial business venture? No. Man, you're probably not <laughs> going to retire on it. <laughs> no. But um, people have asked. But I wanted to do it not from what I got out of it, but more what I put into it. Mm-hmm. And right, It feeds the soul. It does. And mm-hmm. when you look at your life as an entire, you know, the whole analytical side, the mm-hmm. spreadsheet jockeys, mm-hmm. all that analysis, I said, gosh, how is poetry help? People say, how does it help with your business and your mm-hmm. business writing? Because I write a lot mm-hmm. in proposals and business uh, applications. Mm-hmm. Here's what it does. First of all, it grants an empathy. Mm-hmm. Number one, a number a certain empathy. Number two, you're not bound. I like to say I escaped the gravitational pull mm-hmm. of engineering writing by getting past the formulaic and the prescriptive writing. Mm-hmm. Every profession, every profession of business has its own jargon, its own mm-hmm. vocabulary, its own way of saying and doing mm-hmm. things. When you write poetry, you escape that. Mm-hmm. You you are not bound by pretty much anything, mm-hmm. and and the joy comes out. I just, I think it's made me a better writer. Mm -hmm. It's made me take a deeper and broader look at things. Mm -hmm. Um, I would encourage anybody to do it. In fact, this is what is interesting. I'm certain that many of your viewers are do journaling. They write a journal and the journal that probably has their deepest thoughts, their emotions, their feelings. You can get that out in poetry too. So for me, I think it's made me a better business person. I'm working on book number two. Um, like I say, it's uh, they're not commercial ventures. I never, I never took it from that standpoint. Um, but it's fun, mm-hmm. you know. It, it, it really is, mm-hmm. and I think it's just helped me. Um, I think I've given away more books than I sold, frankly. Uh, yeah, but that's it, the way it ends up being, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? But um, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really having a wonderful time doing it. Uh, my business is is moving along fine. I still do a lot of coaching. I mm-hmm. facilitate what are called war rooms, mm-hmm. where I will go in and do a lot of the real traditional activities like SWOT analyses, mm-hmm. differentiation workshops, uh, competitor workshops, where we 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 assume we're on the other side of the fence, kind of quote unquote attacking the firm and mm-hmm. our ideas and approach. And I love doing that. Mm-hmm. That is a um, that's been a lot of fun mm-hmm. in my in my professional uh, mm-hmm. my professional life. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of what's going on there, Deb. And I know that's a rather long window. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you know, because I think people think they have to do just one thing, right? And some people do, and or, you know, most people do, and you know, many do very very well at that. But I think allowing your brain to kind of do this <clears throat> free floating between all these various things is very healthy. 
It is. And I, like I say, I, um, one thing I wouldn't, you know, one of the things I'm, well, one thing I'm very glad about people, you know, when I was writing, I said, I should write a, a lot of people say I should, I should, but they mm-hmm. don't. Here's a good example. The number of people I, when I turned in my PhD, mm-hmm. by the way, the day I turned my PhD and I got a parking ticket at the university. Which really, oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I remember I turned it into the assistant dean and she said, come here, I want to show you something. She opened mm-hmm. a, a, file, a file cabinet mm-hmm. and in there she goes, do you see all these files? And I'm thinking, what is she trying to show me? Or I go, yeah. She goes, you know what these are? I go, no. She goes, they're ABD, mm-hmm. and which stands, of course, for all but dissertation. Mm-hmm. And uh, she said, you should be very proud. None of these people have finished. You have finished. Mm-hmm. And I've talked to a lot of people along the way. They'll say, oh, I've got all my coursework done. All I have to do is right. write my dissertation. Mm-hmm. And or I, I say, have, I'm one course right. short. <laughs> right. And I always say to them, put, a, put exclamation points around or marks around mm-hmm. the word all regarding mm-hmm. your dissertation. Mm-hmm. That's the heavy lift. Mm-hmm. That's where, glad I did it. Mm-hmm. Would I do it again? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. Am I glad I did it? Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Yes, I am. And the same with the book. You know, people say, gosh, I've written a lot of poems. I've written a novel. I've written stories. Mm-hmm. I always say to them, if you feel like memorializing mm-hmm. it and doing it, even to learn the process mm-hmm. of publishing and right. that, do it. Mm-hmm. simply, And maybe it's only it. something you give to your family. I mean, you yeah, know, depending exactly. on what it is. But and, and the cool thing is you can do small runs now. You know, it used right. to be that when you were an author, you had to, you know, sign with a big publisher and they would, print, you know, print a gazillion of them. And, you know, most of the time you had a gazillion of them in your basement because they didn't sell. Right. So I'm, you know, I'm really enjoying that, of mm-hmm. course. And I'm working on the second book and, and I'll see, and I'm also going to, you know, have watercolor. One of the things I've always liked about the written word and I do this a lot in my business where we're working on proposals, presentations is always accompany the language with mm-hmm. some sort of a graphic okay, or, you know, to augment mm-hmm. that. It really, it really helps to mm-hmm. focus the reader's attention and, and really see the, the picture, so mm-hmm. to speak. And I really, I really like that. Um, mm-hmm. I have a lot of energy. I still teach. Uh, I, as we talked earlier, I, I'm going to be teaching a course too on professional services mm-hmm. marketing, where I work with students that are in investment banking, finance, accounting, maybe they're going into insurance, whatever, mm-hmm. um, on starting their own business, mm-hmm. on how to market their services, because I see a lot of folks coming out great technical skills, mm-hmm. but on the kind of the business development skills with those, they're not, sometimes they're not that strong. Mm -hmm. And secondly, often there, there's not a lot of um, relationship building. And, and I think that's sort of, I I think the last couple Mm -hmm. of years have sort of destroyed relationship building in a way, Mm -hmm. you know, when you, when you think about zooming Mm -hmm. and all, all that stuff. Right. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, um, I can say the other thing is my my bachelor's in civil, my MBA, PhD, I all did full time. It took me 20 years. To, to, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and at the end, I always I, I this is sort of tongue in cheek. My advisor, my PhD advisor, when she wanted to get me out of there. I, re, I think she said it tongue in cheek. I sure hope she did. She mm-hmm. said, I can't stand you anymore. I want you out of <laughs> I you just you were of, there so long. <laughs> she goes, I want you out of this program once mm-hmm. and for all. And um so, but I'm glad, like I say, I, mm-hmm. I have no regrets. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I did it. So some, I mentioned early on the threads that run through it. Uh, first of all, when I, when I'm working with teams, I'm, I'm in the, I'm in a classroom type setting. I mm-hmm. love the classroom. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love the classroom. I'm energized by students. I'm energized in workshops and work situations, love to write. Uh, and I'd like to help firms win work, mm-hmm. plain and simple, working mm-hmm. with them to uh to again win work Mm -hmm. share my knowledge but more importantly get them to show how their knowledge is going to help them and help them win work i call Mm -hmm. myself the corporate socrates Mm -hmm. you know everyone talks today about uh, critical thinking Mm -hmm. and one of the ways i think you generate critical thinking is by layering down questions Mm -hmm. not yes or no type questions Mm -hmm. but you know keep keep telling me more Mm -hmm. keep telling me more and one of the things that my business career has also taught me, most people, 
most love to be teachers. Mm -hmm. If they can share their knowledge and information with others, they love doing that. Mm -hmm. They really do. Mm -hmm. And if you can kind of extract that, things will be good. Mm -hmm. I love it. You know, and... I want to talk just a little bit more about your book of poetry. Um, it's called Exploring Life One Poem at a Time. And I love the watercolors. I mean, I thought those were absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. You know, it it struck me that it was, again, combining both, you know, both the left brain and the right brain because poetry is very structured. I mean, you know, and, and which kind of engineering, you know, you, you do A, then you do B, then you, you do C, um, you know, and, and so poetry, I mean, it is free form, but there are, you know, like you had four lines and, you know, all of right. these various things. And then of course you approached it in the, the publishing aspect from a very business, you know, you, you broke it down into, I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. And I think what it showed me, aside from the fact that it really was just great poems, except you almost started me out crying when you were talking about your elderly cat, um, you know, and then, and then the poems about your granddaughter, I just thought those were delightful. She's going to love those when she grows up, you know, and, and, but it, you know, it really was, it, it is like a, 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 a metaphor for business. You know, you have to be creative, but you have to also be structured. And I think that's where so many businesses get caught up is you've got the marketing people who come up with these ideas. <laughs> you know? right. And and then you have the other people that are like, no, 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 no. We need to know this and this and this and this and this. And unfortunately in many businesses, those two butt heads, you know, and, and so what you do is you really help bring those together. So talk to us more about that. Yeah, that great, great point. Uh, and thanks. Thanks for that. Deb, when I here's well, first of all, one thing I want like to comment, every business group starts, they go zip lining, they do 20 jumping jacks, they they do. Oh, don't kind you of love great, team building yeah, exercises, team, <laughs> team building. Mm -hmm. Try writing a poem. Try breaking a group down. Say you write about the team that's going to work on this. You write about the product or service we're going to sell. You write about the client. You will have a ton of fun. Doesn't have to rhyme. Doesn't have to follow the right, you know, uh, what would come out mm -hmm. of the standard. I am big pentameters and right, whatever right. all just, those things were. Just, mm -hmm. just write it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what it's done, what it really has done for me, it's, first of all, I want to comment on the cat poem. I read that at an open mic poetry night mm -hmm. and four of the people in the audience started crying. I knew. And I, they came up to me and they said, this is so beautiful. And I, I then in a way I felt bad. I said, geez, I didn't mean to make you, mm -hmm. I didn't mean to make you cry, but uh, you know. It was, it was but, a very sweet tribute to a cat that's getting a little older. Yeah. And it was, a, it was a sad time. I, anyway, I write about spirituality, nature, and love. That's, mm -hmm. that's the, my focal, mm -hmm. my focal areas. Here's where it's helped me in, in business. It's taken me away from the hard reality of the spreadsheet mm. of the, you can't, you can't put culture and, and uh, relationships into a spreadsheet. Right. It, they it, don't it, fit. It, it, they don't fit. So this lets me, as I say, reach the escape velocity to get mm -hmm. away from that formulaic uh, mm -hmm. type work. And in my mind, it enriches my overall vocabulary. And I think it will for any team. Mm -hmm. Every, everybody listening to your podcast, I'm sure they have the right brain activity. They, they sing, they dance, they play mm -hmm. instruments or whatever. That makes you a much better business person. Mm -hmm. It makes you uh, far better because it gives you a sense of, humanity uh, mm -hmm. sense. Uh, and if you were to ask me this five years ago, do I feel this? I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even said this, this, mm -hmm. this is really something that's happened to me over the last, uh, the last couple of years of my life. It also helps with metaphor. I, mm -hmm. I, I think I, you may have, I, I did share with you, I wrote a paper uh, with a colleague a few years ago, mm -hmm. and this was amazing to me. I was going to teach at a, uh, leadership seminar mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. So I'm driving out of my hometown to the airport. There's a historic five and dine here. It's one of the most historic in the in the United States, mm -hmm. actually. So I said, how am I going to teach? And it's about, I, had, I did a visioning exercise. Now, mm -hmm. you're looking at a guy who used to think vision statements and mission statements were a bunch of garbage. I, right, I because have, you can't be put honest. those in a spreadsheet. <laughs> right. 
But then I thought, well, wait a minute. Is it the, is it what comes out or is it the input to it? Is it really the, dis, do you distill the essence of the firm and what you're all about? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I went and I stopped at the store and I bought four poems or I'm sorry, four, four uh, puzzles. Mm -hmm. and jigsaw puzzles. Were, mm -hmm. Jigsaw puzzles, three, 300 pieces each. Mm -hmm. um, and they were on cats, as a matter of fact, but one, they were the same genre, if you will, the same author, mm -hmm. but like one might have three cats on a fence. The other might have two cats playing with a ball of yarn, same color scheme or whatnot. Anyway, I took those four mm -hmm. and I handed, I had four groups of eight people at the session. I gave one a complete box. I gave the other a box with no, uh, was a similar puzzle, but no cover. Mm -hmm. I gave the another one a box mm -hmm. with where I took out the cover and the edge pieces. And I gave the other one, um, trying to think how I did that. I think the wrong box with, mm -hmm. the, with that. Right. And so I basically said, you made it pretty difficult. Right. And when anybody, and it's really simple puzzles around 600 years. And I was shocked. There was no research done on this, but here's a good example. When you put together a puzzle, what do you have in front of you? Well, usually you've got the box cover. And, right. and the picture of it. Right. You have a vision, right? So that group, you'd expect them to do better. But then there was mm -hmm. another group who simply, who kept running over to look and say, that must be it. I said, here's the only rules. 25 minutes, 25 minutes, and you can't exchange pieces. Uh -huh. But So people would run around, look, and then they, some would realize, hey, there's no edge or corner pieces. Mm -hmm. How do we do this? I'm not sure what to do. And, and that is what we do. We right. start by doing all the edge, right? Right. And the world's not like that. So the mm -hmm. metaphor that comes out of it is absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. It drives teamwork. Mm -hmm. I, I've since added a lot to it. I put it on an oil cloth, which is very confusing. Mm -hmm. And I have a machine that makes noise. And the whole idea. Right. So is, there's distractions. Right. It's the real world. Mm -hmm. It's the real world. Mm -hmm. And so people would say, gosh, if I could only, if I had only had the box cover, I would have done, or if I could have only turned over this oil cloth. And I said, mm -hmm. I never said you couldn't. I just right. said you had 25. Yeah. So they go, are you kidding me? I said, mm -hmm. look, when you scan the environment, when you look at competitors, mm -hmm. as long as you're ethical and moral, mm -hmm. you can do, and firms do it right. all the time. Mm -hmm. Then I went on to add to in future, uh, or I'm sorry, subsequent mm -hmm. uh, sessions, I put finger puppets on their hands. And to watch people trying to put together, a, and they said, why do, what's the purpose of them? I said, a lot of firms come up with great vision statements and mm -hmm. strategy, but they constrain the resources. Right. So mm -hmm. that's analogous. So I like mm -hmm. to use a lot of metaphor. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, if I could have taken these off, I said, I didn't say you could. Right. Didn't say you couldn't. Didn't mm -hmm. say you couldn't. So anyway, the good news is with that, it serves and it's a very, very old mm -hmm. technology. My mm -hmm. God, everybody's grandparents had their uh, puzzle oh, they, that sat on the dining room table. Mm -hmm. for maybe you'd two walk months. by and you'd put a piece mm -hmm. or two together. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so the, the timing issue is you can't wait forever. You need to move on. Mm -hmm. Right. But anyway, the metaphor is great. I like mm -hmm. to use it. It helps now getting back to the poetry. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. it, it, it helps me to take complex issues mm -hmm. and just start to play with them a little bit and say, mm -hmm. okay, we're designing a bridge. We're designing a, a rail system, mm -hmm. but what does it really mean to the users? Mm -hmm. What's the experience? Right. Yeah, is it have? connecting people with families? Right. And, and how are we, and I really focus. So when I call myself the observant poet, mm -hmm. Deb, it's just that I'll give you an example. I was driving by a, there's a nursing home here in town and I think it was around Mother's Day or whatever. There were two or three women sitting on the on the bench, all dressed up, you know, they're holding their new purses and everything, waiting for their families to pick them up. Mm -hmm. And I wrote about that because I started to get, I'm guessing these women were octogenarians mm -hmm. anyway. And we start those stories in our heads anyway, right? Right. And 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 I was I I thought to myself, you know, these what would what was it like when they were little girls? What was mm -hmm. it like growing up? What was mm -hmm. it? So I wrote a poem about that. It's called Floral Dresses because they all they were all in dresses and mm -hmm. flowers on it. But I, you know, I just thought about that, and I, I look around and I'll I'll see a, a pet, or uh, I'm writing one now about a hotel lobby, which I think is sort of the crossroads of life when mm -hmm. you're in a major hotel. And I find it you can write about anything, anywhere, anytime, mm -hmm. and that's what I like about it. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's just enriched the whole business experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's other people that journal and write, and mm -hmm. they would probably say the same mm -hmm. thing. Right. You know? 
Well, and what it's doing too is it's putting your mind in, you know, it, you're stopping thinking about the serious business world things, whatever it is, and, and kind of giving your brain time to relax. Um, you know, I remember like on September 11th, when, you know, we just kept seeing the images of the World Trade Center falling and, and the poor man falling. I mean, all of those various things. And that was just so overwhelming that I spent several hours watching I Love Lucy reruns. You know, my brain needed to shut off, but still kind of be going, um, you know, and, and I think that's, you know, what people do when they're journaling, when they're writing poetry is they're, they're taking their brain and, and shifting it into a different mode because then it gives it time to rest. So then it works better when you call on it again. Right, exactly. And like I say, when I, so for me, it's, it's one of the, I like to write in more of a conversational style. Mm -hmm. and sometimes engineers don't like that. They like to revert back to, uh, they like to revert back to a more structured, what I call kind of dry and boring. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when they're, they're struggling with the writing or maybe they're struggling with how to present, I'll say, let me ask you a question. What if you were sitting right now with a really, really good friend mm -hmm. and you were really excited about what you were doing or what the end product was going mm -hmm. to be. Say it's an engineering design. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you would not talk to that person the way you're going to write a right. proposal mm -hmm. or write about that. Think about think about the passion mm -hmm. you're going to have, the, uh, the connectedness to the client mm -hmm. and the client's personnel and to the public writ large. Mm -hmm. So that that's an area that... Uh, that I really, you know, I really think works well. Mm -hmm. uh, also, one of the, one of the items that I do when I teach, uh, I think a lot of my um, a lot of my colleagues say that I I'm probably an easy grader. I don't think I'm an easy grader. One of the things I let my students do their papers over as many times as they'd like, and they say, "Why are you doing that?" Mm -hmm. And I say, "Well, for a couple of reasons. I'm more interested in them learning than I am saying I got gotcha. you." Mm -hmm. Now. I tell my students too, don't ever go back to your employer and say, mm -hmm. you know, I had this goofy professor that used to let us do things over and over again. Mm -hmm. And they go, no, we're not gonna let you do it over. Get it done on time mm -hmm. when it's supposed to be done. But at, at the time that you're in college in particular, that's a time of great exploration. Mm -hmm. It's a time of learning. It's a time to explore. And I, one of the, something I, was very proud of. I'm, I rate generally highly in the overall ranking of professors. Mm -hmm. uh, I bring a lot of practical applications mm -hmm. to the class. And I, it's interesting, each, each week I do what's called the week in business. They have to come and talk about an article they've read, something they've listened mm -hmm. to, whatever. And to get them engaged and watch how they, their minds work is really... It, I, the reason I love teaching too, Deb, is I, I get paid to learn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Half, right. You, tell, and I, you should be learning at, along with the students. I tell my students that I go, I got the best of all worlds. You're paying through your tuition for me. And I get to learn half of what I get is learning from you. Mm -hmm. So I said, who could ask for a better deal than, than that? Mm -hmm. And uh, so so I'll, I'll continue to teach, which I, which I do mm -hmm. like. I'll continue to work with any firms that want to uh, you, help with either war rooms or strategy mm -hmm. sessions or poetry session mm -hmm. for that matter. I strongly recommend doing that. And again, you're not, you you know, you may prefer kayaking or zip lining before mm -hmm. you start your session. I get it. Um, I like them too. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Well, you know, and, and I love the concept of team building and obviously that's been around, you know, forever. Right. I did the, you know, the, the, the things where, you know, we went off site and, you know, and, and we did all sorts of things and, and some of the things I liked, some of them I didn't, um, you know, it was, and it was interesting because I would actually only, when, when I did it with this one company, I'd only been there a couple of weeks. So, you know, but some of the, and they only did it every six months. And so some of them actually knew each other pretty well. And then, you know, there were those of us who were newbies, but it, some of it, I, I, you know, it was like, really, no, you know, this is like the, the ones I, I really did not like the fall over, you know, get, get high on the ladder and fall backwards and, and hope people catch you, you know, because there, yes, you, you have to have trust, but what if somebody falls? I mean, you know, what if you damage your vice president or, or something like that? Um, you know, and, and 
there were there were just parts of it that I the fear factor or the I'm sorry, I don't get this, you know, and, and which, you know, clearly kind of demonstrated that maybe they didn't know what they were doing or hadn't explained it well enough to me or, you know, all of those various things. But, you know, the, the puzzle thing I love or or having them write poetry, having them get out of that work mode, um, you know, and, and I mean, the, the thing is, you know, obviously some of them you have to be back in physical proximity with with each other. But some of the things now you can do on Zoom. But, you know, the, the puzzle concept and, and you know, it's it's uh, you'd sent me your academic paper that you wrote. It's been a long time since I wrote. Oh, no, my brain just shut off. Um, but, you know, there were parts of it that I really did understand because, you know, it, it when I stopped and thought about it, it was OK. This does make sense. You know, when you are forcing people into those situations where they don't you know, don't have all the information or they feel that they don't have or that they feel they can't ask. Because how many times do we see that in businesses where people say, you know, oh, gosh, you know, I, I didn't do that. And you said, well, why didn't you ask? Well, I didn't know I could. You know, so that's a leadership thing. You know, does exactly. that leader have the, you know, his open door policy? Does she, you know, tell people, you know, feel free to ask questions and mean it? Because that's yep. the other thing. I mean, you can say, come to me anytime, but if it's, I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow or, you know, whatever, then clearly you don't have that. Um, but, you know, I, 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 I did, doing the puzzle thing, I just thought, oh, this, you know, because I'm one of those people that I get really impatient doing jigsaw puzzles. And pretty soon I'm like, this piece will fit here as I'm pounding it into place. Right. Um, but it, it, it does really show just how different groups work together and how some of them get incredibly creative. Uh, you did mention oh. in the in the paper, one of the things was that somebody removed the distracting tablecloth. Exactly. Well, they flipped it over and yeah. had a better contrast. Yeah. And, and what one of the things I find that, that is, is a bit disturbing, mm -hmm. people, it's very hard, especially for managers, to check mm -hmm. their egos at the door. Mm -hmm. Right. Check your egos mm -hmm. at, at the door and and to and to say, I am no different than anybody in this room mm -hmm. and I want to participate and we're not going to, we're not going to demean anybody mm -hmm. by any way stretch. We're going to get every idea out there that we can. I, one of my strengths is ideation. I, mm -hmm. Deb, I like the wackiest ideas in the world. I really do. Mm -hmm. And when I taught like the class on technology, commercialization transfer began to realize, you know what? There are, in fact, one of the things we would look at sometimes is products that were designed a couple of years ago that never got off the shelf mm -hmm. when all of a sudden they have the application today. And so we right. say, hey, yeah. maybe we can use mm -hmm. it this way. Mm -hmm. And the number of firms, I, I, I'll, say to, I, I'll say to my students, who would you like to work for? And mm -hmm. someone would say, oh, I'd like to work for Google or Apple or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'll go, why? And they go, well, they have come up with innovative products. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would also say, let me su suggest something maybe more important than the innovative products. Mm -hmm. What kind of work environments? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's people. becoming more and more important, right? Exactly. And so, like I say, in engineering, there are so many cool opportunities. Mm -hmm. It is funny. One of the things I'll do, and it's it's been around for obviously forever. But when you do a SWOT analysis, I'll be working with a group and I'll say, okay, what are our strengths? Mm -hmm. Oh, and they'll have a mountain of them. Mm -hmm. I'll say, what are our weaknesses? And Oh, no, we have, we have none. No. Right? And I said, so do you think there's not a competitor in another hotel mm -hmm. room or conference center or office right now thinking that they're not going to win? They're not going to beat us because they don't, they're not as strong. Mm -hmm. I, I said, I guarantee you. They've got a laundry list of weaknesses that we mm -hmm. have. I can guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. And so being objective and, and being willing to sometimes get have some thick skin. Mm -hmm. But what I find is the very best performers are ones that are willing to check the egos at the door mm -hmm. always, have a sense of empathy, concern, mm -hmm. um, you know, joy, if mm -hmm. you will for the, the, the team, your team, your, the product or project that you're working on. I know it sounds kind of, kind of, uh, you know, traditional, mm -hmm. but I do think that that's how firms win. Uh, and here's the other thing that's everybody make for the most part, think about automobiles, for example, mm -hmm. every auto company for the most part makes a great car. Right. 
right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and, and they do the same thing. They get right. you from and, A to B. There's but differences, the, but they still get you from A to B. Right. But what's the experience? You know mm-hmm. what? The, why, why is that? It's, mm-hmm. it, it, the car almost wraps around me. It's great mm-hmm. to drive. It's, mm-hmm. it's, they don't say, well, you know, the type of paint that they, use, maybe you love the color, but you're mm-hmm. not diving into the chemistry of the paint mm-hmm. or, you know, the tires mm-hmm. that are on it. How are those tires made? Mm-hmm. Whatever. So, um, and that's where poetry helps me too, mm-hmm. because it lets me, it lets me take a look at um, the what we're doing mm-hmm. and how it connects better with people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and you're right. It is that experience, um, you know, and, and, but it, it makes me wonder, especially in this post pandemic, are we post pandemic? I don't think they've quite declared that yet, but <laughs> no. you know, uh, Businesses are definitely changing. Now, It's I think we've got another year-ish before things really settle because the companies, I think, that said, okay, we're going to be 100% work from home are really figuring that isn't working. You know, But most most will not be like Elon Musk and say, go back in or quit. I mean, you know, right. that's, yeah, you know. Um, but I think they're going to try the hybrids, you know, all of these various things. I think they're going to you know, give people a lot of flexibility, I think people are going to really look for that. Um, but how have you seen things these last couple of years? I mean, has, you know, h- how do you do teamwork when you're maybe in multiple states, multiple time zones? I mean, how do you really get things to, to work well together? Because to me, it, it is about those conversations at the coffee maker. It's, you know, the, the bopping by and seeing that somebody has a new picture on their desk. Those things I think are what, sometimes make people work together better than just, you know, how do we design this new product? Exactly. You know, at, first of all, I work largely in, in a hybrid model. Mm-hmm. My preference is always to be in person. Here, here's what's interesting, and I'll answer that directly in a minute. I've asked my students, these are grad students, most mm-hmm. of them are 22 to 25 years old. I'll say, do you prefer online, online mm-hmm. classes or in person? And in person mm-hmm. is preferred. Which is kind of in, which is mm-hmm. which is kind of interesting. The what I find in I work a, I work a hybrid model. In some cases, it's o, it's okay. It mm-hmm. works okay if we're maybe we're we're doing an assessment of a competitor or whatever, and we all see each other on a screen, and somebody pops up their screen share, and they're working on the mm-hmm. notes or whatever. But in most cases, especially when you're doing a rehearsal for a big presentation, mm-hmm. most of these presentations that I do rehearsals on. Two are for are for uh, projects that are over uh, in terms of probably fees in the twenty five million dollar on mm-hmm. up range. So their major the stakes mm-hmm. are pretty mm-hmm. high. But rehearsing in person is absolutely vital because mm-hmm. it's everything from how you stand, mm-hmm. how you know where you're looking, how mm-hmm. the energy level you're portraying, which you really cannot you really cannot do online very well. At least right. I find that I mm-hmm. that I can't. One of the things online has done, Deb, I was reading an interesting thing. It's done more for plastic surgery than just about See, I anything. just use the soften filter. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what's funny. You know, people, people hear their voice. They go, oh, my God, do I sound like that? Mm-hmm. Or I thought I looked like George Clooney or Nicole mm-hmm. Kidman. You mean I don't? Oh, no. Mm-hmm. But um I find that uh, I I still prefer in person for Mm -hmm. the reasons you said. There's a lot of nuance Mm -hmm. that cannot be captured um, doing the Zoom call. Mm -hmm. And where you can do it, where where you can do it in person. Here's what's very challenging. I've done a lot of workshops where most of the people are in attendance. Mm -hmm. So we're all together, Mm -hmm. but some people join remote. Right. So you've got that, Mm -hmm. it works but it's not as efficient. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it's getting better. There's no mm-hmm. question. And maybe the hybrid model is here, mm-hmm. is here to stay. Mm-hmm. The, so I've, I've done both. Um, it, I, it depends more on the, on the subject matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, you know, and, and I'm kind of assuming that, that businesses will go back more to in person, um, you know, and, and maybe it's, you know, 
two days a week, whatever, you know, and, and because I think people really do like working from home. Um, you know, there's a variety of reasons for that, but you know, it, it's, but yeah, that, that back in now, the tricky part with back in is you know, like, I was talking to somebody and this was during the middle of the pandemic and she had a job where she had to go in. Um, and, and she went in on Tuesdays and Thursdays and worked from home Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And she said, no matter where she was, the file she needed was in the other location. <laughs> and, you know, even though, it, you know, everything's on the cloud, all of those things, we still print stuff. We still write stuff down. We put stuff on sticky notes, whatever. And so she found that it was just incredibly distracting, you know, because it, you know, it, it was either pack up everything every other day or, you know, risk not having stuff with, with you. And, and so she, you know, she said, I'm, I'm one or the other. I don't want to do both or I'll only come in every once in a while, you know, maybe a couple times a month, you know, for team meetings, team lunches, things like that. But she said, you know, trying to do a hybrid of, you know, part home, part at work just didn't work. And, you know, and, and then we have this situation now where we have people who have never actually, and I mean, we've obviously had this situation forever, especially because of technology, but people are, are, parts of teams, but they have never physically met in person. And that's, I think, you know, that that gets a little complicated too, um, you know, and, and, and especially if, you know, it, it obviously depends on what you're doing. If you're doing something that is just rote, you know, procedure, you just, you know, follow the rules, right. you're not, but, but anytime you're trying to be creative, I think it, you know, and, and maybe it is that you have that big team building thing and then, you know, everybody goes off to their various, you know, little, little, little one bedroom, you know, places or all of those things. But, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's going to be interesting because while productivity went up the last two years, I think teamwork went down. I do too. And, and you know, what's interesting, I, by one of the challenges and you hit on it, when, when you have teams, I've seen debriefings by clients on projects mm -hmm. that have been lost where the client might say to the firm that I'm working with, we didn't see any camaraderie or we didn't see any connectedness. Mm -hmm. Like this team likes to work together. Yeah. Even like if it's just, they look at each other and have those little giggles or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. You end up with this atomized uh, little disparate pieces all over the place that you're trying to knit together. And it becomes apparent mm -hmm. that this is not a team we want to work mm -hmm. with. And again, I keep going back to, I keep going back to the, some of the research I did, which mm -hmm. was applied and said, you know, we want that relationship. Mm -hmm. We want that project manager. Mm -hmm. Who are we working with? Right. Generally, the project manager mm -hmm. or, the, or the point person in the firm is more important than the firm itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're saying, you know, your firm mm -hmm. is great, but we want you. You know, mm -hmm. we want to be working with you. Mm -hmm. And so that that needs to that needs to come true mm -hmm. because, first of all, it leads to better business performance. Mm -hmm. But it also is in a really effective barrier mm -hmm. to some other firm trying to break in, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you right. can from yeah. a strategy it's like, standpoint. No, we have to we have to stay with them because we really like Bob. Right. <laughs> and it's a trust and it's a trust-based mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. Um it's the concept. I did another uh, podcast with, where we talked about the concept of weak ties and strong ties. You know, the importance of a strong tie is obviously a relationship like that. Mm -hmm. But a weak tie is something where you might have somebody said, hey, you know, I don't really know John over there. Mm -hmm. Do you think Uncle so-and-so can connect me with him, right? Mm -hmm. So those things happen, right? And that's important for firms to always strengthen mm -hmm. those uh, strength. Weak, and I view strong ties as a measure of stability and weak ties as a measure of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And and so the personal side, you know, like my dad always used to say, you know, the most important thing in your life is relationships, you know, relationships with your God, with your family, and indeed with yourself. And so when you think about that, uh, and, and I'm talking about in a sincere, in a sincere way, that just makes life and the life and business uh, far more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you mentioned that weak ties is actually an opportunity. And I love that. So explain that a little bit more. Sure. Think about, and maybe, maybe think about you're graduated from college and you really can't, and you're, you're looking for a job, maybe you can't find it. And you're, you're talking to one of your parents and your mom says, Hey, you know, you know, so-and-so that knows aunt Carol. Um, I'm going to talk to aunt Carol because she has a friend in this business that may be helpful to you. 
Well, that introduction then takes place, mm -hmm. which offers an opportunity for you to get a job. People do this all the mm -hmm. time in their life, all the time. Mm -hmm. You're always using a weak tie to extend your network for firms to do what I like to call extend their innovative frontier, their relationships with others, right? So I, here's, an, here's a goofy idea. Here's, uh, Deb, I always have wacky ideas and I run them by people I know. And if their faces really twist up, mm -hmm. I know it's a stupid idea. Yeah, or they if give they you the, oh, all right, mm -hmm. <laughs> look. <laughs> if they don't twist up too bad, I think I'm onto something here. But they'll say, you know, I know somebody who's done something like that. I should introduce you to them. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, would you please? Mm -hmm. So it's that would you please in that next mm -hmm. person that really begins to extend your network. Mm -hmm. This concept, and by the way, the fellow's name, it's, it was written back. He was a sociologist. It's called The Strength of Weak Ties. Mm -hmm. And he's also written a book, a paper called The Problem of Embeddedness. Mm -hmm. And he basically says, you cannot have any business that is not embedded in a social mm -hmm. network. Mm -hmm. All business is embedded in social networks. People we know, right. people who introduce mm -hmm. us to others that they know. that we. So this concept, I, I like it and I talk about it a lot with firms because it, as I say, I use this phrase, it extends your innovative boundary. It pushes mm -hmm. it out very, very far for your firm. And firms that are good at that mm -hmm. really succeed right. because they, it opens up a whole dimension to them. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's where technology has really benefited us because that person could be on the other side of the globe. You know, sure. or you know, two time zones over, or whatever. Um, you exactly. know, and, and because of technology, we can now work with them in ways that you know, even five years ago, it would have been more difficult. Exactly. So we have the best of all worlds, right? Mm -hmm. We have the technology which you know connects us. Like I said, the minute you have a website, you have a global business. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, right? And so you 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 have that opportunity. But then you also, you know, the in-person and your ability to um, your ability to interact with others mm -hmm. uh, in a sincere way. And I'm not talking about it in any kind of take advantage way. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about sincere human interaction mm -hmm. um, is really vital mm -hmm. to success. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and it comes back to exactly what you were saying, the relationships. That, that we build with people, um, you know, and, and, and we shouldn't be using the fact that, you know, there's the pandemic, we can't meet in person, cost $900 bazillion to fly somewhere. Those are just excuses, you know, right. and, and so obviously it is better to be able to, to see each other in person, but, you know, there's, there's so many ways around it now. Yeah. You know, and, and I mean, technology, you know, like one of the things people like hearing other people's voices. I mean, you know, we love seeing their faces. That's why Zoom has taken off. But, you know, as we were talking, I got two Voxer messages, which I don't know if you're familiar with that app. It's a little short recording. So it's a little voicemail, you know, and, and somebody just, you know, they, they, you know, it can, I don't even, I, I have no idea how long they can be, but for the most part, you know, it's, you're just sending somebody a, hi, you know, I just wanted to make sure you saw that the meeting is tonight we've changed it to whatever. And there's just a little something different about hearing it as opposed to reading an email about it. Um, you know, because then you can get that tone in, you can say, you know, Oh, good morning. I hope you had a fabulous 4th of July. I mean, things like that. Even when right. you write that, it's like, <laughs> you know, but hearing that voice can, can help. And so technology really is letting us do great things. You know, what's interesting though, too, Deb, is I, um, I wrote somebody a letter mm -hmm. thanking, believe it or not, it was on a thank you card. I mean, mm -hmm. old fashioned. One of those printed doohickey things that you yes, put stamps yes, on? And, <laughs> yeah, yes. And um, I actually, the reason was I, we were at a conference. I borrowed some money from him because the ATM machine wasn't working in this place. Oh, no. We like mm -hmm. a, this resort, so I couldn't uh -huh. go off the property. So he gave me some money and I just sent it back to him. Mm -hmm. And I, then I wrote, and I wrote a little card out. Mm -hmm. He calls me and he, and he says, you know, first of all, obviously, thanks for the money mm -hmm. back. But he said, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Nobody's ever written me a note. And I wrote him a few other things about our event that we were at together and everything. And I thought to myself, gee, is that, is that quote unquote old, mm -hmm. maybe even ancient right. process mm -hmm. of writing mm -hmm. once in a while? Does it demonstrate a certain uh, care mm -hmm. and concern 
that can't get through an email or whatever. I, right. I don't know. Well, and it's definitely a way to stand out. You know, I'm, I'm looking here on my desk and I have four handwritten notes that people sent me, um, you know, and they're quick, fast little things that, you know, I mean, like, here's one that, that somebody sent me and it's, you know, it says, thanks for celebrating good conversations with us. We love working with you. That's all it says, um, yeah. you know, and and it's personalized. I mean, you know, and, and you can tell when you look at it, you know, it's not one of those printed, you know, you know, things. I mean, this really was somebody took the 20 seconds to sit down and write it out. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, this will go on my wall. You know, there's just something about those handwritten notes that that people are like, wow, um, it's, it's the same way with why direct mail is back to catching people's attention. We don't get it. So it kind of stands out. But yeah, I think one of the, the best things that, that people can do is pop somebody a little handwritten note, um, you know, and, and it, it's funny. I, I bought a roll of the hundred stamps that are, you know, not they're, they're you know, whatever amount that right. will last me probably a really long time because I don't send stand stuff. But yeah, I mean, it's just kind of one of those little personal touches that can help us build those relationships with people. Yeah, you know, I, at, one of the things that, and it's kind of a piece of advice I would give every, anybody in business, uh, Deb, is that I, when I was with the large engineering firm, I had 80 people that worked for me in my, in my group. And that was the creative group, the proposal group. We did almost a thousand proposals a year. Uh, the creative group did everything from stippling, which I never knew what stippling was, to uh, 3D printing, to graphics, to AR, VR, the whole mm -hmm. space. And our strategy group was under me. And mm -hmm. one of the, something I told my staff, I always wanted them to do what we lived by was when anybody called you up or reached out to you, mm -hmm. the first thing that should come out of your mouth is how can I help? Mm -hmm. How can I be helpful to you? Yep. I'm not saying do their work for them. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm saying, mm -hmm. but how can I be helpful? So they know that they've got somebody that, you know, maybe they're really wrestling with something that whatever it might be. And you as a colleague, a coworker, whatever, can help somebody out, I think is, is something that mm -hmm. they'll always remember. And right. you'll remember too. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh, Steve, this is why I set a timer because, you know, we are almost at the top of the hour and I've been having so much fun, but tell people specifically about the services that you provide and how they can reach you. First of all, you can reach me at, uh, I'll give you my contact coordinates first. Mm -hmm. I have two websites. It's www.sfmayorllc.com. Mm -hmm. Mayor is like Metro Goldwyn Mayor. Okay. okay. That's my primary website. I also have another website called theobservantpoet.com. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can reach, you can check out my, some of my blogs and poems are, are, are there. Mm -hmm. My phone is on my LinkedIn account and also mm -hmm. at the website, but it's 716 area code and it's 864-1761. Mm -hmm. What I like to do is work with businesses to help them win work. Mm -hmm. And that includes facilitating uh, strategy sessions, working on strategies with them, helping them to get ready for major presentations, mm -hmm. rehearse with them, help them select the right medium they want to use, whether it's like you say, AR, VR, green room technology, which a lot of firms are using now, and to really help and to work and rehearse with them on how to, on how to uh, win, win work. Uh, always willing to talk to somebody pro bono, of course, mm -hmm. and just to say, because I always want to know if I can be helpful to them, we should explore mm -hmm. that, or maybe I can recommend someone else, uh, someone else to them. And uh, obviously, like to connect with them on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn and um, Lunch Club. That, that's I how know that's met. how you and I met. I love Lunch Club. Right, mm -hmm. referred by a referred by a common person mm -hmm. that we both know. Mm -hmm. So, which is kind of interesting, mm -hmm. right? And uh, yeah, so I would say I would say those are those are the key mm -hmm. the key items. Mm -hmm. And I like to be active. I'm very active. And um, if anybody has any ideas for me on a poem they want me to write, I'm. Ah. I'm oh, you I, do you know, commission I'm, work. Hmm. Well, I would do it. I would even do it and just send it off to them. You know, mm -hmm. if they have some thoughts, say, "Hey, did you ever think about writing a poem about mm -hmm. X Y Z? Whatever X Y Z is." And because I think I have a pretty wide palette, but mm -hmm. I'm always interested in ideas, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, so that's, uh, 
This has been great. I love being with you. I love here. it. Yeah, you know, it's it's been so much fun. We've been having a great discussion. Um, you know, we definitely should do it again because there's, you know, so many more things that we could be talking about and expanding on this. Um, and I think especially as maybe we, you know, businesses are starting to figure out, okay, how do we work together now? Um, because a right. lot of them have downsized. You know, they might want to bring their employees back, but hmm, now they don't have the space. <laughs> you know, you know sure. all of those various things. And so I think it would be great to have you back to talk about how businesses really can be dealing with all of these new things that they're having to deal with. Yeah. And, and I think I bring a nice objective to it, uh, point of view to it where I'm not necessarily vested in the business. In fact, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll start a session and some people say, why do we got to do this? Why do we? I'll say, look, I'm the person you need to get uses your 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 center yeah. of attention mm -hmm. or i got a lot of places left for scar tissue on mm -hmm. my body so if you want to mm -hmm. get mad at somebody get mad at me mm -hmm. but we're going to go through this and we're, yep. so i love i love working like and mm -hmm. i say kind of the corporate socrates there and mm -hmm. asking the right questions that help to uncover those nuggets that uh and really the third party business. often can can do that you're not vested in anything right right they can i walk out the door they if they say i don't mm -hmm. want to see him anymore whatever mm -hmm. yeah. um, but yeah, but um, yeah, that's so, and I, I revel, I, just like in my students, I revel in their success. I mm -hmm. revel in the success of businesses. Too. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave us with? Um, I think, I think I said them, Deb, just, you know, always be, try, you know, say, how can I help? How can I, how can I be helpful? Exercise the right side of your brain too. exercise that get get away from what you do all the time and it can be any i don't care if you're doing pottery sculpting writing the painting whatever playing an instrument dancing mm -hmm. whatever you do but get out and do it and understand that that has really make really makes you a much more rounded mm -hmm. individual i love it so much fun and and you talk in your poetry book that dancing's not exactly your highlight um, unless it's with your granddaughter so you know and and i want people to read it so it's it's exploring life one poem at a time right and i've been having such a great discussion with steve mayer i can't wait to do it again i'm deb creer and until next time everyone have a great day Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.